The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, Paige. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Good. Right. Good. Hey, uh, your newsletter is outstanding, Matt. I'm, I'm telling you, Matt, it is outstanding. And so is the Vernon Millet. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 6648 Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning. I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. That's right, Nico, to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. Good morning. I'm Paige Clark. And it's a beautiful morning in down St. St. Petersburg, mostly clear and 75 degrees. A nice 75. A little fall it's, Christmas in the yeah, air. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's... Uh, the other morning was down to 72, and it was actually cold for me, you know, getting the newspaper out in the morning. Uh, goes, ah, <laughs> a lot the of people are laughing at us right Yeah, now. of course, but uh, Tom came in uh, to work out Saturday morning. He says, man, this is it. This is the change, you know, and so uh, we're Love ready it. for the change, folks. Hey, subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. It's news you can use to stay healthy and keep up with our show. Yep. That's a brand new one out uh, right now. It, uh is uh, for the 15th. So it comes out on the 1st and the 15th of every month. It's $10 a month, so $5 an issue. Right into your inbox. And also, please pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder, over 310 cell-ready liquid ingredients to make the good stuff go in. And the bad stuff come out. That's right. And we can take your calls, 877-927-6648. Yep. So, Nico, you know, everyone's talking about climate change. Mm -hmm. But what you and I have been sharing is the information that the climate change that's coming is not what the mainstream media is telling us. Mm -hmm. And everyone, mm -hmm. and even many scientists, uh, there seems to be two schools of thought, right? That seems to be. We have the big push for the, uh, which I believe is just the carbon tax type of thing. Right. Where they're, uh, tax saying, us to yeah, death to breathe. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, everything's getting warmer, and certainly we've seen some warm days. Uh, I think in the last year it's pretty much evened out. I think it's but, more volatility in the yeah, weather versus think, hotter yeah, cold, Yeah, right? and if we look back in history, and I look at uh, two or three different websites that I go to, one is Suspicious Observer, so always, of course, get the morning news and see the condition of the sun. But I also uh, visit... Uh, Ice Age Farmer, and a couple of other ones, the Diebolt uh, Association and things like that. Well, let me, but, you know, you watched this podcast and you were just telling me about it before mm -hmm. the show, and let me kind of lead into it because okay. I haven't yet to see it, but mm -hmm. it is on my watch list. Okay. And uh, this article uh, based on this podcast says, Dire Consequences for Wildlife on the Ground with Tom in Ohio. Yeah. And Tom from Ohio, who is Tom? He's a retired farmer, an agronomist. Yeah, agronomist is the science of utilizing plants, animals, and soils for fuel, food, feed, fiber, oh, and more. the four Fs. There the you four go. Fs. <laughs> and um, so Tom joined uh, Christians of the Ice Age Farmer for this latest on-the-ground report to discuss a remarkable lack of foliage for wildlife that's happening this year no acorns, very light chestnuts and berries, and which likely will be one of the longest, hungriest winters that we've seen in decades. And he's gonna, they explore how the effects of natural cycles, such as this grand solar minimum, can be unpredictable and even heard of, of the billions of animals that are migrating and now He's seeing animals seeking out food. So share more with us. This is important yeah. stuff. Well, there's two things. Uh, one, of course, he's a farmer, so he uh, is uh, looking at his trees mm -hmm. on his property. He's got a huge piece of property and a lot of adjacent wild areas to the property, too. Mm -hmm. And he's noticing, he says, the trees that are the hardiest are down 50% in volume as far as what they're producing, the right. acorns and things like that. And that's the hardiest trees. Most trees, like the apple trees and the berry trees, are down 30 to 40% wow. below that. This is so significant. Yeah, it's very significant. So what he's noticing, a lot of the wild animals are eating different foods. They're coming into uh, the uh, areas where people are. Coming in closer. They're coming in closer. Looking which for is, something. Which is completely uh, different than they normally do. They normally shy away from us. Right. So for them to come into our areas means there's a big shortage of food in the wild. 
And this really prompted my interest because, of course, I've been following the different farmers all across the world. And I, in fact, have a map here of the food shortages. I can bring that up. Yeah. I'm sending that to myself because I got to listen to that. Yeah, this is the map here. And this shows you a worldwide map. It should come up in a second here. And these are reported. Uh, it's, the page is tracking crop losses, right? Yeah. Uh, according to the Grand Solar Minimum, hail, storms, flooding, drought, and early frosts, all of these things affecting food cycles. Well, you can see this is pretty diverse. I can't really, I think I can move it around a little bit in the United States, Canada. Of hey, course. Zoom, zoom in on Florida just so we can see what, what they say. I'm just curious. Tomato shortage, nationwide price increase following Irma. Hmm. So maybe we can start to think that these storms that have been cycling around, whether they're natural or man-enhanced, mm -hmm. which some of us believe, they create economic change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, to watch so that. The thing is with him, he's talking about the volume and he's talking about the changes that he sees. A pretty bright guy, it seems like. Uh, for me, this really piqued my interest because uh, when I'm talking about... Uh, the grand solar minimum mm -hmm. kind of people glaze over their eyes and things like that then you know we have no indications other than a lot of these podcasts and if you watch the sun you have indications that we're in a minimum we haven't had any sunspots to speak of this last year and this may continue we think we're on the cusp of uh, having this next cycle come in which is cycle 25 where we'll start to get some sunspots and that's even more concerning because if we have more activity on the sun now because the sun over the last 11 years haven't, hasn't really been buffered, so mm -hmm. our, our atmosphere hasn't been buffered, which means our atmosphere has gotten shrunk. Right. So it gets smaller and thinner, which means the cosmic rays from the sun and from other space debris and things like that has an easier path in. And you can feel it on your skin if you go outside. And but don't we have lower sunspot activity now because the sun has kind of gone to sleep? Yeah. The grand the, solar minimum. Yeah, and when the sun goes to sleep, it means that we're getting buffered less. Right. And the buffering is what makes our atmosphere grow, mm -hmm. make it quite large, which is our protection. Mm -hmm. So if you go outside in the midday sun and spend 10 minutes out there with no sunscreen you can actually feel the burning now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's not because it's hotter outside right now it's 75 degrees and if mm -hmm. it was midday and 75 degrees you could still get burned because the protection isn't there right they give warnings to airline people of course the astronauts are in uh, dire straits and you know if we you spend a lot of time in the midday sun you're gonna get burned and you're gonna have cancers and things like that this mm -hmm. is what happens so as the sunspots uh, ramp back up this gonna throw a lot at our atmosphere and our atmosphere is not buffered it's not ready for it so we're gonna get a lot more volatile storms if you follow the suspicious observer during the hurricanes you'll see the big coronal holes come in when the storm intensifies so right. there's a direct link between all of this just follow suspicious observer and you'll you'll get a lot of education on how this happens and Nico you know now we have this technology you've got this podcast for example yeah. you know you follow Ben Davison you're learning about you're tying it all together but what we've shared with is that you know People from ages ago have been telling us about these changes. That's right. Cave drawings. Yeah, so we'll go on with this. We'll be right back. We'll be right back after this yeah. break. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And welcome back to the show. So I, I had just brought this uh, up uh, from CNN. Food will be scarce, expensive, and less nutritious, the climate report says. Of course, this particular report is all about the climate change agenda, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any shortages. That's right. And there is going to be shortages. They're just yeah. not attributing it to yeah. the right cause as far as you and yeah, I Yeah, and uh, they're saying here the window is closing rapidly how to have lower emissions. Well, I agree with that. Emissions, we shouldn't have pollution. There's no doubt about that. But this doesn't mean that CO2 is going to prompt something like the warming of the earth. This is nonsense because CO2, first of all, is a small amount that we're up, and it's been up way higher over millennia. Mm -hmm. So this is all bogus stuff, but I want to bring this up because if you're looking into the agriculture, what's happening in Canada, it's already snowing up there. There's frost on the ground. You know, my uh, son's in Tahoe's already got snow up on his ski slopes that's where right. he's the... Yeah. If you look market. at the Mississippi Valley, you're seeing that the corn is not being harvested. Some of the sweet corn is because it has a th shorter growing season, but the, the stuff they use for the uh, high fructose corn syrup and all these things they throw in our Franken food, that stuff is... Uh, going to be rotting in the fields because uh, it's not ready to go mm -hmm. and uh, winter's coming. As they say, food will become scarcer. Grocery prices will spike and crops will lose their nutritional value due to this climate crisis. And it will change the kind of crops that farmers are going to grow. And of course, it, it says some climates are too hot some climates are too cold, and maybe a few of them are just right. And so that's probably true, because what's, what's happening is the growing areas in the United States and Canada are moving south. So there's going to be dry areas, going to be areas that are too wet, there's going to be flooding, and you're just not going to know when's the right time to plant and the harvest may not come. And we're finding out soybeans are down to by half, the wheat is down by 50 to 60 percent. There's a huge shortage. There's a huge shortage in pork around the world because of what's happening in China with mm -hmm. the uh, destroying of all the pigs because of the uh, swine flu in pigs, not mm -hmm. in humans. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see a lot of this stuff going Going on and I've said five or six years ago start grabbing some food and cans and things like that that it's you can use later folks. on yeah it's a, it, you know we there are gonna be craziness and we see how 
inappropriately we all behave when a crisis happens. Mm -hmm. You know, the grocery stores are, you know, completely ransacked. Within well, in a, the within hours. a day or so, yeah, within they're hours. gone. If, mm -hmm. when, when we have the hurricanes here, even with that threat of the hurricane, it's almost worse because it may not be coming, but the stores are going to be empty anyway. The water's gone. Everybody's filling up sandbags way ahead of time, which is kind of good, but the anxiety is there. We had, with this last storm, we had anxiety for a week, and it never came. That's right. Is it better just to wait and do what our natural uh, instincts tell us to do? It may be better to do that because the anxiety is not there for the 10 days. It's just while a storm's going on. But out. a lot of people make a lot of money off of that anxiety. Well, of course. That's, mm -hmm. that's always there. But and any better, society better will have be, that. Better to be well planned, I think. And, you know, undernourishment has long been a concern of scientists who watch the climate crisis slowly. It should be what we're all concerned about because. Our food is healthy. The planet is being consumed by humans. They have to get those little things in to give us a, a feeling of guilt. The and, truth is... And we st definitely have a huge, huge population of humans on the planet now, maybe mm -hmm. close to 7 billion. And this comes about, I think, because of the farming practices. When you farm, you need more bodies. You have more babies. When you're hunter and gathers, you have one or two max. Mm -hmm. And there's a long period in between when you, you and you don't have children because you're nursing one of them, and that's your natural protection against getting pregnant again. Right. Uh, we've lost a lot of these things. A lot of the natural controls, right? Yeah, the natural controls. Whether it be in the food yeah. or the Yeah. So for the last uh, maybe five to ten thousand years, we've really been farming a lot, which destroys not only uh, the environment and it makes weaker animals and it makes weaker food along the lines that because we're not replenishing the the the, uh, the soil like we used to naturally. This is interesting, Nico. Mm -hmm. A study that was published in May that looked at the production of the top 10 global crops. Okay. And they are barley, cassava, maize, oil palm, rapeseed, rice, sorghum, soybean, sugarcane, and wheat. Mm -hmm. And they found that because of the climate crisis and the change, the world has already seen a reduction of 35 trillion calories every year. That equates to about 1% of food calories lost each year. Yeah, and these, of course, are agricultural foods, foods that uh, I don't eat a lot of. Right. But in a time of emergency, it's huge. And these right. are also food that the animals eat, too. And as we said, perhaps as the, yeah, these are foods for the animal. Yeah. Yeah. And as the animals these foods go down, the animals are going to become more scarce, and certain people want to make sure the animals are available for them, mm -hmm. for the kings, yeah. while the serfs, That's been going on, while the uh, serfs live on the starvation time, foods, right? Yeah. They're getting everybody prepared. So if you want to help save the planet, you better cut back to a hamburger and a half a week. <laughs> I like the way they say this. <laughs> High-income countries will likely be able to cope, but areas like the sub-Saharan Africa, parts of Asia and India will become more vulnerable. These are the areas, of course, where uh, there's not a lot of growing. Uh, Sub-Sahara Desert Africa is uh, teeming with life, but not a lot of agriculture, but they're really trying to change that. China's in mm -hmm. there do, building roads, and we've got a lot of countries in there wanting to go in those areas because that may be one of the last sources because it's definitely getting colder in Europe. Yeah, it says food is the great leveler among people. And imagine if you have a bunch of people in a room that don't like each other, he said. If there's plenty of food in the room, they may look at each other suspiciously, but they will likely get along. Yes. If, however, you make them say, all stay in the room for an extended period of time and start to remove the food so there's not enough to go around, that's when relationships get strained. I, th I just think about, you know, what is it, that Black Sunday or Black, Black Friday day after Thanksgiving? You know, how the people are trying oh. to rush to buy oh, the yeah. new TV screen <laughs> or right. something? Yeah. And yeah. that's not even food, guys. Yeah. Can you imagine? All the hatred and uh, fear and anxiety comes to play by not having enough to eat. And that's why it's important to adapt now. And this is why it's important to prepare. And this is what our ancestors always did. When they saw this activity diminish in the sun, they started preparing. All the ancient cultures always did this. All the ancient cultures always fell also during these times. And uh, it makes me kind of wonder what's going to happen in the United States if this next cycle is the grand solar minimum or the one after that. I think the, it's either this one or the next one. I don't see it going much past that because it's been over 200 years and that's the cycle is about 200 years. I like that, like that Bible verse, my people perish for they have not knowledge.
Yeah. And they're not acting on yeah. it. Yeah. And the, the thing that scares me is all the ancient knowledge that we used to have is really being diminished by the Internet. I mean, they're also saving some of it by the Internet. But as far as the major players yeah, like Google... Yeah, it's kind Google, of a yin-yang thing. Yeah, we have a lot of people archiving stuff. And Ice Age Farmer is one of those guys that brings us really important information. So the Internet has both. You just have to sift through it and decide which is which. You know, Facebook called themselves a publisher. Isn't that yeah. great that all these people have produced all this content for them, the publisher? Yeah. But really, publisher, um, idea shaper, molders of perception. Well, there's too Google. much garbage on that. I, Remember, I Google says they're going to fix it so that yeah, whenever there's you... There's just one right answer for just everything. Just one right answer for everything. So, guys, <laughs> just right. if you want to know what the right answer is, Google has it. Yeah, and that's what I love about Google because now you've got 15 answers you can dig in and kind of decide for yourself what is garbage and well, what is Well, that's not their plan. Their that, plan is to tell you they, that they have And they've said the right that, one. no doubt about it. I saw it. I saw the video. You know. So when we come back, I want to go over uh, a different way of looking at things. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are smart and have found the answers. So we'll be right back. Be right back. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're talking about how the climate change, whether it's getting hotter or colder, is going to impact our food. And so we're going to need knowledge for better food systems. And in 2013, there was a TED Talk. 
Alan Savory. It was titled How to Fight Desert Desertification and Reverse Climate Change. And there was a Zimbabwean ecologist, his name is Alan Savory. He claimed that the holistic management, grazing management method that <clears throat> he had developed and promoted for over 40 years. Mm -hmm could stop this desertification and reduce atmospheric carbon dioxide to pre-industrial levels. So we're looking at ways that we can have a better food system. And a lot of people are taking a Yeah, look at it. and I think the reason that it got onto TED Talk was about the climate change thing because mm -hmm. TED Talk is really driven politically and they have a lot of stuff about climate change. And a lot of times when we're talking about different kinds of methods and things like that, they don't get on here. But I'm glad that Alan Savory got on this TED Talk because it was a real powerful talk. And uh, we're always talking about the, the grass fed livestock industry. Mm -hmm. Or we're talking about livestock. Yes. But what he's put the direction to is fake focusing on cows eating what they're supposed to eat. Yeah, exactly right. And what he wants to do and what he's done for many years in Africa and in different uh, parts of the world is show people how to do this in a modern way. In other words, we talked many times about Joe Salatina here in Philadelphia. Or, uh, uh, Virginia. Uh, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And he does the type of method where he moves. Folks, this just ain't normal. That's it's right. So <laughs> because we can't have have the animals move anymore. We have to fence them in. They have to be in jail like our human counterparts, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to find different methods of simulating what nature it intends for these animals because cows love that top green little part. I mean, the, the grass might be this high, but, but they like chop. to skim it yeah, off the and top. And their mouth is just perfect enough to do that. You know, the, we have other animals and their mouths are shaped different for tearing the complete plant out. Like goats. Cow, like goats do, exactly. Right. So it's important to have the right kind of animal eating the grasses and topping them off and then moving them out and letting the land recover. What Sal Salatino has always done is he brings... Salatine, just so Salatine, in case people look up. Joel yeah, Sal Salatine. Sal Mm -hmm. excuse me what he does he brings the chickens in and the chickens go in there and kind of disturb the whole grass because of their pecking right. you know the cows have been defecating on there they've been getting the and grass get a little bugs. bit shorter and they go out there and eat the bugs and they scratch everything up and they put the dung everywhere which is supposed to happen then he brings the pigs in and the pigs go and root everything right he does and, a multi-layering yeah. and then he lets then he it moves set. the house yeah, yeah then moves on to another area yeah and so this property then is sitting dormant for anywhere from 30 days to 90 days and the process starts all over again. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of what the same, uh, the the same, same type of same approach. Now they have much more land in Africa to deal with than we did in the United States. Uh, so he does it a little bit differently but he is still moving the animals from pasture to pasture bringing in different species also and he's been teaching this people to the native people. Uh, and this is a huge thing, and this is the new way. Now, he's been doing this for 40 years, getting very little uh, recognition. And, and now people are starting to pay attention. And just like they say, he calls it holistic management, can be described as a grazing management method based on planned rotational grazing that mimics nature, exactly yeah. what you said, Nico, Which is with the, the aim of sequestering carbon and water into the soil and thus increasing pasture productivity. Yeah, holistic management at a metal level is a framework for decision making and a planning tool applied primarily to grazing systems. It is based on a comprehensive goal mm -hmm. setting focused on a kind of life uh, pastoral pastoralists power. wish to have. Yeah. People that want to live in a, in a pasture environment. Well, yeah. And raising, you know, farm animals. Right. Right, exactly. Which is uh, the new, you know, that was the new method. Remember, mm -hmm. if you're going to have some kind of agriculture, that means you have to have fences so the animals can't come through and trample it. At the same time, you have to have the animals in some kind of fence so they don't wander off because you're not moving with the animals anymore. So this is foreign to how we used to do things. We used to just follow the animals, but now we become more civilized, so right. to speak. And we try and control the animals and, and, and what's grown where. But yeah. listen to this, guys. The report finds that the 11 scientifically peer-reviewed studies that actually support the beneficial effects of this holistic management. Uh, listed and approved on the Alan Savory, Savory Institute website, uh, five, you know, so people have actually said this really does produce quantitative, qualitative results. 
Well, what you're doing is upgrading the land at mm -hmm. the same time. So right. one of the things, in order to mimic nature, holistic management is founded upon the simple ecological theory that assumes that herbivorous animals can rehabilitate degraded land through grazing and that the world's grasslands and wild herbivores evolved in parallel and thus are interdependent to mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. uh, these hu huge herds of... Uh, antelope or buffalo or whatever they are, gazelles and giraffes and elephants and things like that, do a damage to the soil in a way that actually makes it rejuvenate itself. Yeah, and we've got to start taking a look at things like this that have evidence that they're working. That's They've right. been, I mean, he's been doing this for 40 years. Yeah, and there's a, there's a lot of people doing this type of thing. Uh, I was watching a podcast uh, the weekend before where had this farmer was taking the dung that his horses was doing and spreading it all over and well, his that's land. What they, that's what they do in this Austria. Is, when when you right. land in Austria, mm -hmm. you get off that plane and you, you smell, smell yeah. the, the manure because yeah. they don't allow synthetic fertilizers right. there. Everything's yeah. green. So these are the natural processes. Because we don't let the animals roam, now we have to actually go spread their manure also. It's a much better system. But of course, we can't do the old system anymore because there's cities in the ways. There's growing areas in the way. People own land now. So we we can't go back. So these are the ways we can go forward along the lines of a more natural way of doing it. Mm -hmm. We're never going to go back unless this catastrophe cycle that uh, people on the web are talking about is the real thing and in 50 years we start over. Maybe that'll happen. It seems like it's happened in the past mm -hmm. four or five times, right. maybe longer. So we'll see what happens. So but how can you learn more about Alan Savory? You can support the holistic management and regenerative agriculture. You can visit the Savory Institute, savory.global, and learn more from there, you know? I, I think it's going to be something that we've got to start encouraging everyone to embrace this need to kind of regenerate what we're using. and maximize our yield. Well, the, the question for me comes to mind, can we do this on an individual level? And I say, yes, we can. We have little pieces of property that we can, and we can do a similar type of thing to our property. Mm -hmm. uh, let the plants grow a little bit more. Find the plants that you want to grow and encourage them and get rid of the plants that you don't want to grow. Start using your pets. If you're feeding your pet good food, Mm -hmm. then the, the droppings from the pet or the rabbits that you have or the chickens that you will get, mm -hmm. getting those things and spreading that around or going down in Largo, we have lots of horses in the Pinellas County area. You, I'll bet you you can go down there and clean somebody's stall for free and use that. That's what my dad used to do when he was in Boynton Beach. He used to twice a year go to the stalls. Can I clean your stalls for you? Oh, sure. And he'd go oh. out there and fill his, fill his truck up when, with when manure. When I had horses, I had a lot of people that would come and get it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is a win-win for both uh, situations. Mm -hmm. This is the new paradigm, folks. We're going to have these shortages of food. There's no doubt in my mind in the next 20 years, there's going to be some really rough years coming ahead where you're not going to find food at the grocery stores. You better have have it at home. And, and you're you, going to find out how expensive it's got. Oh, it's going to triple, quadruple, and even five, ten times in a case. It's crazy stuff. Anyway, we're up on a break, so we'll be back in a few minutes. Pick up the prime ledge. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of DFNN.com. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So we've been talking about climate change and what's going to happen with our food, and boy, there's some people that are really getting involved. According to Climate News Network, university ends red meat meals and cuts carbon. What a nice thing Cambridge. to do. It's yeah, Cambridge. Cambridge. It's not just any university. Cambridge University in England, yeah, one beef. of the richest and most famous universities in the world, has ended red meat in its school outlets. Beef yeah. and lamb are off the menu in cafes. So, again, they state that this is their move to cut, to reduce the carbon footprint of the university. And, again, I'm not saying that we don't need to do things. There's a climate change coming. There's going to be a food shortage. But I think... Instead of just leveling with people and saying, look, we're going to go into a solar minimum and the food's going to be scarce and we're all going to have to learn to sort of work with the starvation foods, maybe eat more greens and rices, and the meat's going to be saved for the kings and the paupers are going to have to eat the rice. Yeah, I say, um, I say do the exact opposite, to start eating the meat right exactly. now so you're nice and healthy when the problems comes and when you're forced exactly. to eat the other stuff, at least you have a chance of, you know, that recovery later on. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the things that I've been storing over the last five years have been meat products. So tell us what meat products you're storing. Uh, anything that's in a can. They have bacon Tuna, in a can. Tuna, bacon. All, yeah, bacon in the can There's already. There's butter in a can now. Bacon in the can already cooked. Nice. Okay. Okay. Each can has about 10 or 20 slices, depending on the size of the can. It's already cooked, lasts for 10 years in the can. No problems. Uh, of course, tuna, any of the kinds of fish and oysters and all those and types of things. And you buy that big leg of ham. The, um... Yeah, I still have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that is actually just for special occasions. But, you know, mm -hmm. storing food in cans is probably one of the best things to do. Uh, jars are good, too. They tend to maybe break. Mm -hmm. Now and then. That's true. Uh, so, and you have to store them in kind of a situation where it doesn't get too hot. So you yep. can't put them outside. You can't okay. bury them. Mm -hmm. You got to put them in the house and to keep them under 85 degrees if you can. That Dark be room, optimal. cellar, ideally if you have one. Yeah, but this is you know this is the agenda now. Everybody is coming out uh, with a different product that is uh, mimicking and tasting like and looking like and some of them even bleed a little bit uh, I don't know exactly how they're doing it I don't really care how they're doing it it's my last resort as far as I'm concerned mm -hmm. uh, they may but be. they're turning this into the, this is some big huge health movement that they're making yeah. promoting well-being 
And I, I really do feel concerned because most people will read these articles and feel, geez, I need to do this. I need to be healthy. I need to deny these sacred animal healthy foods to my child because otherwise I'm a bad citizen. Yeah, and what happens too as you get older, and I'm 75 now, so I can speak with authority on this. I, I think. Yes, you can. Uh, I've noticed that when my parents were in their 70s, they changed eating habits a little bit. They were eating a little bit more of the cereal and cereals the pastries. And pastries, eating less meat. Perhaps a lot of it has to do with budgets because now you're on a fixed income, you're not working. And so, digestive fire. Uh, yeah, and you have problems digesting some so things. So you stay away from the foods that you can't digest. I see yeah, that. Yeah, and a of lot course, I really think cooked meat is probably the easiest things to digest in the fat. That that's mm -hmm. a very easy thing for our body to digest. Mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, take plant food, it's very hard to digest in most cases. Easier to digest the real uh, processed foods, though. In other words, if you process that wheat and everything like that, and you mm -hmm. process it down into a sugar consistency like flour, that's going to be easier to digest. Your body may have some trouble with the after effects of it, but that's not the digestive process. So that's just the, the crap that's in there. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have less nutrition, your body is kind of robbing itself of the nutrition it already has just to digest these foods that don't have it. And we're talking about corn, we're talking about wheat, we're talking rice. about rice, all these things in the beginning of the program that you mentioned that uh, we're you're getting more and more of, but, right. uh, the, the more and more crops. of because of these products here. Mm -hmm. So I think I think we what we're trying to encourage you to do is understand much of the climate crisis agenda is they know what's coming and it's going to be a shortage of food and they want to make sure the food the the masses aren't clamoring for the real healthy food well, they tie it in such a way. In other words, cows that are in the barn eating the corn and everything like that fart a lot. Farting. Yeah, farting yeah, cows. Yeah, so that's really bad for the climate, you know. <laughs> but you put them out in the grass, they don't do that, folks. That's right. That's right. You know, they're, they're eating crap food. You'd be doing the same thing when you eat that stuff. Exactly. It's okay. How, so many, you're, how many people that eat that so stuff? So all the vegetarians who are... Uh, Flatuating all over the place. <laughs> They're okay, I guess, but the cows, not so much. I don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's a funny thing, folks, but this um, is the way the world is today. So. And where do they start it? They started at a big, major think tank university, elitist mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm to affect change. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. And so stuff. when you're looking at the uh, climate and you're looking at the planet and you see these shortages, know where they're coming from. It's because the, uh, the growing areas are changing or they're flooding. I mean, if you're down in the Mississippi River and now it's fall, but in the springtime, you know it floods every year. So you don't plant there. You plant a little bit higher. A little bit higher in a way. And you don't build your house there. Right. Right. On sinking sand. That's right. Yeah. So and there's a, quite a few articles I found on this one. There's another one uh, on a university. Uh, I don't know if this is the same university or not, but uh, yeah, it was UK. So yeah. we're talking well, about Well, it's another thing. one at Goldsmith University in London. So there's a whole push there. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, again, we don't want to encourage eating poorly sourced animal foods. That's what we've been teaching on this show. Right. We need to get back to where these healthy, the healthy sources of these foods. However, and probably there are some people that eat too much of an animal food. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, because again... Well, I mean, when you're, when you're looking at this picture that's up here, mm -hmm. you're looking at a double cheeseburger Probably right. not the thing that you and I would eat uh, as, as far as, I mean, if we fixed it ourselves from ground beef, not too bad because it's at least pasture raids and things like right. that. But when I think of eating meat, I certainly don't think of a, a cheeseburger with a bun. Right. I think of and a And not uh, even steak. a and not a double patty even. Maybe. No, no. Yeah. In fact, uh, as we've researched and as we've done ourselves, our portions over the years have gotten smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. Where I could eat that big ribeye in the beginning, now I save half of it. And exactly. I make sure that the fat is there. And when I look at the meat, I'm looking at the fat, and I want the one that's not trimmed so much. So our, our perception certainly has changed. And this whole thing about the climate, yeah, it's, it's, it's happening. We're definitely hotter and colder in places. The climate is definitely shifting, which means that our growing air is shifting. It means that we're going to get more floods and more tornadoes, which means that's bad for growing food. It's bad, bad for agriculture. But as we've seen from Tom who was uh, that uh, that farmer 
Mm. The wildlife is under stress too. That's right. It's so not now, just us, folks. Yeah. So during these times, our ancestors had a, a tough time because the hunting wasn't there. Mm -hmm. We're trying to say that the agriculture and the hunting are not going to be there at all. So you better start prepping. That's right. That's, That's right. Yeah. So what were the, the first things in, in prepping? What do you think of when you're thinking of prepping? You have a, a little room in your house? I have a you... room where I've started putting food, and then I just kind of cycle it out. And, and you know, I'm glad you told me, you know, I've got tuna and I've got mm -hmm clams and, and pickled fish and you got hamburger you've got steaks you can put in there there's lots mm -hmm. of different things yeah stick around folks we got a little bit more so please during the break pick up our primal edge our one shot wonder and also take a look at our health signals newsletter and pick that up too and we'll be right back be right back I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading trading hour followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. And welcome back. So we've been talking about the food shortages coming and the different wildlife under stress. Found an article here, five ways to help wildlife this winter. And look how precious that little bird is. Yeah, so when you uh, let, the first uh, clue is let your garden go wild. Leave undisturbed wild areas in your garden. A pile of leaves or brush wood would make a perfect nest in which animals can hide and rest and hibernate. Mm -hmm. And when we leave the ta task of tidying our garden borders and shrubs until early spring, these shelters can actually provide the insects that will give these wildlife uh, food through the winter. Yeah, if you have a composite heath, this will be a welcome habitat for toads and even snakes and slow worms and things like that. Number two, break the ice if you're lucky enough to have some ice. Yeah, <laughs> we don't have, we don't have here. You know, for example, if your garden pond freezes over, 
ensure that you make a hole in the ice. Uh, this will allow the toxic gases yeah, that dioxide. build up in the frozen pond and may kill any of the fish or frogs that are hibernating at the bottom. Yeah, and when you make this hole, it's very important to do it carefully by placing a pan of hot water on the surface. Never break the ice with force or, uh, you know, tipping the boiled water on it. This can kill any fish that's in there. There you so. go. That's right. Number three, feed your birds. Uh, you know, I've always enjoyed birds and, mm -hmm. and, and seeing the different birds that come around at different seasons. Yeah, I, and different uh, foliage will bring different birds in. Very much so. Yeah. They find it difficult to find natural foods such as berries, insects, seeds, worms, and fruit mm -hmm. uh, during the cold season. So you can help out by providing some food to, the, to our little feathered friends. Yeah, provide a range of seeds, fresh and salted peanuts, table scraps such as cheese, fruits, and apples, and pears, and things like that. Garden, bir garden birds also love dried mealworms or wax worms, which can be bought from like the pet store. Right, there you go. And as the cold season approaches and natural food supplies dwindle, this will really help to um, ensure that these this wildlife continues. Yeah. Another thing is clean water and food will encourage mm -hmm. visiting hedgehogs to return regularly to your garden. Minced meat, fresh liver, tin, uh, tinned dog food, uh, not the fish-based kind. Even scrambled eggs. Boy, uh, yeah. you know, you could argue that... Um, and some of these foods are not their natural food, but w what we, Nico and I are sharing is we are actually entering a period where they're not finding enough of their natural food. Yeah, yeah. so uh, this will go into the uh, Health Signals newsletter for the next time, and uh, we'll see you next week, folks. Thanks for sticking around. Have a great day. Bye-bye.